Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Bill. Hello. Yes. Um, I, uh, Turn uh, off your radio, please. I've been doing research um, and you know, following up on the Masonic aspect of the New World Order. Uh huh. And I agree with you uh, when you say that this country is a Masonic Republic, and I understand all of this. What I can understand is if these people are so after world domination, why would they give us a chance? Uh, act in this great Masonic experiment, why wouldn't they just have it locked down 100 years ago? Because it wasn't a chance. It was a sure thing. They, under Our forefathers, if you read their writings, they knew more about human nature than any psychologist that lives on the face of the earth today. They knew we would give up our freedoms in exchange for benefit, our liberties and preserve the, the Republic. They also gave us uh, everything in the Constitution that we could use to destroy our own selves. They understood that human nature is such that if we can get something for nothing, and if we think it's for nothing, that's the way we're going to go. And that's exactly what has happened. So it was just sort of a hollow gesture, because they knew what the outcome would be. Then. Well, not only it wasn't a hollow gesture, they had to establish this country in order to give the common man a taste of freedom for the first time in the history of the world. This had never happened before. It was the catalyst that toppled the kings and queens from their thrones in Europe. It took away the power that opposed them. Number two, it was to prove to the common man that he could not rule himself. They knew that human nature, common man would, would, through his human nature, his human foibles and failings, give up everything that they had given us, and then that would be, that would be the reason quoted to us in the New World Order why we cannot have those liberties or freedoms. I see. And so actually, this was set up as uh, the power transference was taken away from the old... Uh, uh, the aristocrats. That's right, and this, this country was the instrument which would bring into the world the new world order, and it was all put into the great seal of the United States. If you know how to s interpret the symbolism of the mysteries, it's all right there. Who they were, what they were about, and what they intended to, to bring about is, is right there in the great seal. I see. Um, did you know that Albert Pike is buried in the walls of the House of the Temple in Washington, D.C.? Yes. Yeah. Um, and also, what is the U.N. meditation room? <laughs> it is a place where those who understand the, the religion of the New World Order uh, go to meditate and uh, practice through symbology the religion right there in the United Nations. Okay, Bill. So, well, thank you very much, Bill, and be careful. You're welcome. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Lennon. V. Lennon. You all know who Lennon is, don't you? said this, quote, democracy is indispensable to socialism, end quote. Now why is that, do you think? Well, it's simply this, ladies and gentlemen, they're calling the United States a democracy now. It is not, never has been. It is a constitutional republic. A constitutional republic is where there is a balance of power. In the federal government, that balance consists of the executive branch, the judicial branch, and the legislative branch. In the election process, where we elect our representatives to go and take care of business for the state in Washington, D.C., we elect representatives. Our founders set this government up so that senators were picked by the state, not elected by the people. This would make sure that our constitutional republic could not become a democracy and thus turn into an oppressive, dictatorial, socialist state. For they understood the process well. The first step into turning the United States into a democracy was taking the power of the state to choose its own senators away and put it in the hands of the electorate or the people. Whenever the people see that they can vote themselves whatever exists in the treasury, socialism quickly follows. For when the people find out that they can vote themselves whatever they want, and that's what's happening in the country today, people are voting themselves whatever they want, Congress is voting themselves whatever they want, everybody is moving this country more and more into socialism. 
with socialism eventually comes a dictatorship. With a dictatorship always comes fascism in its various forms. Our total and absolute control and ownership by the state of everybody and everything, and that is known as communism. Freedom disappears, ladies and gentlemen, when people become dependent upon the state, or upon a dictator, or upon a king, or a lord, or an emperor, or a baron, or a duke, or duchess, for their very existence, for their job, for their clothing, for their food. When this happens, people, without even realizing it, have become enslaved. In the pursuit of laziness, and in the pursuit of the dole, getting something for nothing, which, folks, is a dream that never, never comes true, there is no such thing as something for nothing. When you accept a benefit from a benefactor, you give away some of your rights, for the benefactor has a right to dictate the manner in which you use the benefit. When you become a child to a father or a mother, the father and the mother have the right to dictate what time the child gets up, what the child has to eat, what kind of work the child does, if the child goes to school or if the child does not, what time the child has to be in bed, whether the child can go out, whether the child can drive a car, whether the child can have a bicycle, whether the child gets any gifts at Christmas time or any other time of the year for that matter. And when people become dependent upon the state, they become the child and the state becomes the father. 